What's up, dude? How was your weekend? You can't talk? I don't know if I believe that you're going to hold that for the rest of the day. I'll just make you wear that every day. So you can't talk because you're green? Why? Because you have a shield? Why can't you talk? Oh, because you're Link. Oh, from the Legend of Zelda series, huh? And Link doesn't really talk much. He might talk in the new games. I haven't played since... I don't even remember the last Zelda slash Link game. He definitely doesn't talk in Smash Brothers, right? Yeah. So, did you have a good weekend, Link? Yeah? Did you have a fun Easter? Yeah, did you get everything that you had hoped for? Heard about the resurrection story and the Easter Buddy came and all kinds of stuff? That's cool. Yeah? What are you doing with your sword, buddy? Just calm down. <laughs> Do you like having a sword and shield, Link? Yeah, is it the coolest? Are you just going to wear this pretty much every day because you think it's so cool? And you don't talk? I don't know, it sounds like a winner. What if I tickled you? Would you then make some noise? Mm hmm. Mm hmm, okay. Well, well, we got a little bit longer. Are you sure you're not going to talk? You're going to make me tell the jokes today? I'm not as good at the jokes. Oh, okay. I tell you what, can you at least stand still on there? I don't want you to fall because you're being silly and silent. Silly and silent. Oh, so you're going to dance instead of standing still? All right, but if you fall, I'm going to send it off and it's going to go viral for you being a silly goose. Yeah. All right. Three o'clock. Apparently, Link is pulling his sword up. All right, let's put that down. Hey, we don't point swords into people's faces. I didn't think I'd have to say that so soon, but here we are. Uh, what day is today? Monday? Yeah. Monday, quarantine cooking. We're going into week four or... 20 or something, I don't know, time's kind of irrelevant at this point. Uh, but today we're gonna make something super fast, super easy, because last week, thank you all for the support, but man, was I busy just every single day. So, we're not exactly phoning it in, but we are gonna like, phone it in a little bit. Uh, we are going to make what's called palmier. Do you know palmier? Okay, they don't have palmier in Hyrule? No, okay, well. Palmier, of course, uh, allegedly invented around the 20th century, uh, most likely Viennese, as are all good pastries, really. Uh, it is often called a palmier, which could translate to a pig's ear, a palm heart, an elephant ear, palmier, whatever. Uh, if you haven't had one, they're super crazy delicious. They are extremely simple to make if you pre-buy your puff pastry, which a lot of people do. I make my own because I'm me, but you can definitely buy it at the store. It's totally fine. Uh, if you decide to make it, uh, do yourself a favor and just make quick puff pastry. It'll save you a ton of time. You don't have to worry so much about the layers being perfect because quite frankly, it's not going to be measured for its height or capacity or anything like that. So use quick puff. The recipe for quick puff is included in the palmier. Palmier is something you can do with quick puff pastry. All right. So, let's imagine that you have your Quick Puff or your Store Bought Puff, right? I'm going to grab mine. I have it already sheeted in this nice little bag, right? It's super easy to work with. Now, palmier, kind of like ganache, is more of a technique than it is an exact recipe. So, it's a little trickier to outline like, hey, this is how much you need. But if you use what I told you to have, you should have enough to make palmier of some sort. Okay, so what we need, puff pastry or quick puff pastry, water with a brush, and some sugar. What's up, Link? The joke? Oh, okay. Apparently we need the jokes and Link's not doing it. All right, so Link, what do you get when you mix a jogger with an apple pie? You don't know? A puff pastry, because the jogger would have been puffing and the pie is a pastry. It's a pretty good one. I can see that you're really holding on to this. Not, okay. Uh, what, since you are clearly an elf, what is an elf's summer job? A short order cook, because elves are, you don't know what a short order cook is, do you? No. Okay. Well, anyway, there's our jokes. That's why we have Blaze tell them, uh, Link tell them. He's still here. Uh, so we have puff pastry, sugar, and water. Do not sub out your sugars until 
you are absolutely sure that you know what you're doing because they all work a little differently. So go ahead and stick with white crystalline sugar. We also typically don't season it or flavor it in any way. I know people almost immediately ask me, hey, what about cinnamon sugar? If you want to do it, go crazy, but it'll affect the way that the caramel forms within the layers later. If you are making your own puff pastry, which I fully, fully endorse, because I know so many of us have nothing but time on our hands and we're really delving deep into pastry, uh, when you get to your final fold or your final two folds, Go ahead and sprinkle a little sugar or even a little powdered sugar in there. It will help caramelize the layers kind of from inception all the way to the end. So you would have a little bit of sugar in this recipe already. Uh, not a ton, just a little, because what will happen is that sugar will start to melt and liquefy within the pastry and it will break down. So powdered sugar is easiest. Crystalline sugar is also fine. Just a little bit, right? Just a little bit in there. What's up, Link? You're just getting your shield up in my face? Okay, cool. Okay, let's keep the shields down. All right, so again, this is more of a technique than it is anything else. So we take our water and we brush the surface. Now we're not looking to drench this. I didn't dip it in the water, but we need some water. Then we're gonna take some sugar. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread it around on top of the water to where we get kind of a nice little coarse paste out of it, right? Feel free to brush the excess off the sides. We're brushing, brushing, brushing. We can take our rolling pin and gently roll it in to the pastry. I'm not trying to change its shape. My shape right now is definitely a rectangle. That's pretty key for its success. And then here's how we get that quintessential shape. Now I'm looking at it. I have a little bit of a bald spot here. There was enough water that it absorbed all the sugar, so I can fill that in. Check the edges, because nobody wants an uncaramelized pommier. So we can let it have a moment to see if it absorbs all the sugar yet again. We're going to let it hang out. What do you think, Link? Is it absorbing it? Nod or shake? Okay. So I don't see it absorbing. I'm pretty happy with this. Now here's how it works. This is how we get that elephant ear shape. You have a rectangle. You fold the ends into the middle, and then you fold those on themselves, okay? So we're going to make like a little book. So we fold these into the middle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of water and a little bit of sugar, right? We've seen this before. This way I don't have any like really dry, kind of sad little areas. Feel free to use the sugar that's on your board. What are you doing, Link? You just, you just being weird? Okay. And then we fold this on itself and this is how we get that elephant ear shape. Now, if it's super warm in your kitchen or you've just taken forever to do this for some reason, do yourself a favor, throw this in the freezer. Do not put it in the refrigerator because what will happen is that water will absorb the sugar, the sugar will turn back into a liquid, the humidity inside your refrigerator will actually speed up that process and it will all leak out. But if we worked at a decent pace like we did today, then we can come back, we take our knife and we can just come through and in about half inch, increments we can just cut right through it and that is palmier super super easy now the traditional theory for baking palmier or baking any puff pastry is to bake it hot because we want to get the most steam out of it so we get all of those layers really bulking up but what we're going to do because of the sugar we do want it to caramelize but we don't want it to burn too quickly is we're going to back off the heat a little bit so what we're going to do is we're going to bake these at about 375 fahrenheit you can use convection or a still oven, it's totally fine. And then what we need to do is monitor how they bake. Because what's going to happen is, especially with the addition of the water, and when the sugar starts to liquefy, it's going to pool around it, and it's going to brown on the bottom first, because that's where the heat is hitting it the quickest. So check on them. Once they've puffed up and you see some browning beginning, I would recommend taking the pan out, flipping them over, that way that sugar drapes back over the top and it kind of coats it. Yes, Link. Yes, that is why we call it puff pastry, because it puffs up. That is an excellent question. Now, those of you who have not experienced a palmier, we're going to pull a little magic of TV off here today. I'm going to put these in the oven. Magically, I'm going to pull some out of the oven. We're going to take a look at them. So here we go. So these were in the oven for about... 25 minutes at 375 uh, with convection 
and you can see we have some golden brown delicious. They are caramelized all the way through, right? It looks like a heart. It does look like a heart. It could also look like an elephant ear. It's so funny how you lost your character already, bud. Man, I was really hopeful. But, say la vie. Now, what we can do at this point is when I check the underside, there's still some crystalline sugar. I can play this game for a while. I can flip them and cook them and keep going forever. But once we have a delicious caramelized pastry, we're pretty much good to go. Now, the dangerous thing, especially, is handling these. I've burned my hands for many, many years, so they're kind of dead to it. Use a spatula or wear heat-resistant gloves, because even touching this, that caramel can grab onto your fingers, and it will burn you, and it will hurt. So do not try to eat these while they are warm. They need to cool to room temperature first. You're very likely to hurt yourself. And then you won't be able to taste anything for days. You'll curse the thought of palmiers, and that's just, that's not right. Palmiers are amazing. So here we have them, they're working. I'm flipping them over. I can dump them back in the oven. Once they're cool, it is not uncommon for them to be dipped into chocolate if you wanna go that route. Me personally, I like them the way they are. Done, simple, delicious, right? So. Here's my little elephant ear, because I hold it up, it looks like an elephant ear. What do you think, Link? It's not an elf ear, right? That'd look weird. Maybe it's like a little smile, huh? Yeah, you like that? Yeah, it's super hot. Uh, luckily, my hands have been burned forever, so that's okay, but be very careful out there. That's palmier. If you have the puff pastry, you can put sugar and water on it. It takes about half an hour before you can enjoy them. You can bake them at lower and lower temperatures to make sure the sugar crystallizes very slowly and evenly, but that's gonna come through practice primarily. So, what do you think, Link? Are there any questions out there? We'll give it a minute. I'll toss these back in to get them more evenly cooked. Nothing? Okay, any questions out there? Perfect. That's palmier, super easy. Send me your photos. I fully endorse making your own puff pastry. It's not as hard as it looks. There's a very detailed picture walkthrough on the website. Uh, and, oh, looks like we got a question coming in. Yeah, so the question is, can you use quick puff? I fully endorse using quick puff pastry, especially if you're gonna make your own. There's no point going through all of the rigors of traditional perfect puff pastry. We're not worried about it getting super, super tall. We don't need a lot of structure in there. Quick puff is more than enough to make your palmiers. Of course, when you're at the grocery store, almost nothing is labeled as quick puff pastry. So you can use full-blown puff. If you're making it yourself, I would, I would more than recommend just making quick puff pastry. It's easier, it's faster, and it'll save you so much time and energy. Uh-oh, Link, we have another one. You can use AP flour or bread flour for this. Uh, it's, it all comes down to the protein content. Don't try and use anything lower than AP flour, otherwise it'll absorb all that water and it will splinter apart during the baking process. If you want a crispier palmier from bread, then you would use bread flour. If you want a crispier palmier from the sugar, you would use the AP flour. Or of course, you can blend the two, meet in the middle, and just work on your baking to get the perfect sugar uh, caramelization. Wow, Link's coming alive. Okay. <laughs> Do we have any other questions out there before this really goes sideways? All right, so that is Palmier. That is Monday. We will see you Wednesday when we make roulade. Spoiler alert, it's the exact same roulade I made on Beat Bobby Flay. I did it there in 20 minutes or less with a camera crew and all kinds of craziness in my face. So if I can do it there, I promise do it. 